Well, hey folks, welcome back to the channel. And again, welcome back to my 2004 GMC Envoy. Today I'm chasing some more electrical gremlins. I was driving the car yesterday and it started shuddering a little bit and uh, the check engine light started blinking at me. And then when I put my code reader on, my little OBD2 Bluetooth scan tool, um, it was giving me an error message or a check engine code of P0300, I believe, which is a multiple misfire code. And if you remember several videos ago, a little while ago, we did a video on replacing one of these ignition coils. Um, I was having a misfire on cylinder three, I believe it was, three or four, I can't remember. Um, I'll put a link to that video down in the description if you want to see how we changed that ignition coil. Pretty straightforward process. Um, I, I don't think that's the issue, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this air plenum. Um, last time I was having an issue similar to this where I was having random misfires. The, uh, the bolts that were holding the ignition coils to uh, the top of the engine came loose for some reason, somehow. So that's what I'm going to check first. I'm going to check the easy things first, uh, and then hopefully that'll fix it. If not, maybe we'll have to replace another ignition coil, and then also stick around to the end of the video because I've got a little update, uh, a, a, a tiny little modification to the car that we're going to do as well. So stick around for that, but let's check out these ignition coils. All right, we've got this air box out of the way, or this air resonator out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is just take a quick inspection. So obviously here's the new ignition coil that we installed several videos ago, and I'm just going to go front to back, back to front, whichever way you want, and uh, just check all of these connectors and see if there's anything loose. So, so far, you know, this is the one I thought may be giving us an issue, but um, so far that looks good. All of these coils look, look and feel tight, and then also the um, electrical connectors here, these all feel tight and everything looks good there. This main connector back there is plugged in the way it should be. Um, so I'm not seeing anything initially that uh, would tell me I've got a bad electrical connector, but who knows? I'm gonna dig into this a little bit more and I'll be back to let you know what I find. All right, guys, good news, bad news. Good news is it didn't take long to figure out what I think is the problem, but um, let me show you the bad news. So I am back here on, uh, say, cylinder number one, two, three, four, and pulled the coil pack, and look at what we have here. Oh, boy. I don't know if you can see that on camera hopefully you can but uh, we have a lot of moisture on that coil pack all right so there we go there's a look down into cylinder number four i see a lot of moisture in there now it looks like looks like we actually have a lot of moisture up around the top so i'm wondering if um this seal is actually going bad so looks like uh, looks actually looks like there is a crack in that seal I don't know if you can see that um, yeah, it looks like that seal is split right there in, in two locations so fingers crossed guys Hopefully that's the issue. I'm going to uh, get a paper towel, clean out that cylinder um, or that spark plug well, and then uh, pull the spark plug, see if there's anything on the actual plug itself. Probably not if it's moisture coming from the top. And then uh, see if I can get a closer look and hopefully confirm you know, whether or not, in fact, it is the seal or... Um, you know, if it's uh, something worse, like one of those gaskets that are, uh, you know, that seal up around where the spark plug or where the um, ignition coil goes in. If that's the case, then, uh, you know, we may be pulling that valve cover and replacing those gaskets or seals, which I did about 
three plus years ago when I tore the engine down to do the uh, oil pump and oil pickup tube. I'm not really looking forward to that. I hope that's not the issue. Um, mainly because this stupid intake here is a pain in the butt to get off. But um, anyway, so fingers crossed. Let me know down in the comments uh, <laughs> what do you guys think. Hopefully this is hopefully this is a slam dunk and we just need to get another ignition coil with a good seal on it um, that will put us back in business. What I did is, as best I could, had my paper towels and I dried up, cleaned up, soaked up all of the water that was in that uh, spark plug well. And then also I took some compressed air and as best I could I blew out the rest of the moisture that was in that uh, spark plug well. And um, also blew out, you know, dried off the actual ignition coil. I'm, I'm still probably 80% convinced that um, this seal around the top of the ignition coil is what was the problem because cylinder number four is directly beneath this drip area uh, where the hood meets you know the the frame of the car or the the body panels of the car and recently over the past couple days we have had a lot of rain um, I don't know how much probably two inches of rain over the past day or so and uh, you know that coupled with the location of where that spark plug is along with the condition or the apparent poor condition of that seal around the top of the ignition coil has me like I said about 80% convinced that that's where or that was the cause of all of the water so I'm gonna get everything put back together I'm gonna get it fired up and see if you know, I get any trouble codes or if she runs smooth. I think I'm still going to go buy another ignition coil. Well, heck, these things have over, uh, with the exception of that new one, these have over 300 and, what am I at, 316,000 miles right now. So it may be time to spring for a whole new set of ignition coils for this thing. But at least I know I need number four. So let me get everything put back together. We'll fire it up and see how it runs. So, now that I got everything battery hooked back up, now my HVAC is going to go through its whole system. Let's see what it sounds like. Alright, so far, so good. But, let me take a listen here. All right, so the engine sounds good. Now another thing we can do is we can take a listen to the exhaust. So the sweet hum of that factory exhaust sounds pretty good. I don't hear anything out of the ordinary with that. And as you can see, we do not have any check engine lights. So I think for the time being, we're in pretty good shape. Like I said, I'm going to go get a new spark plug or I'm going to go get a new ignition coil for number four and I'm going to recheck the other four because remember we replaced ignition coil number three. I'm going to get a new one for number four. I'm going to check the others to see what the condition of those are. Likely we'll go ahead and get another set for the entire car and as of right now, She's running good. So that does it with that gremlin. That, well, luckily that was an easy fix. Now let's get to that modification I was telling you guys about. All right, so here we go with the first modification of the car as promised, guys. I just got these in yesterday. First ever YouTube channel stickers. I'm thinking about putting them right here on the car windshield. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think. Let's get these put on. Let's see how they look. Alright, so what do you think? My first ever sticker on the car. I think it's been a while. I kind of wanted to uh, commemorate the 7,000 subscriber milestone that we hit January 1 this year. So this is kind of a, a little reminder that, you know, we're, we're at 7,000. we got a long ways to go. But, you know, thanks to you guys and all your support, 
I have a good feeling we're going to hit 10,000 subscribers this year. So guys, that is going to do it for this video. As always, thank you for stopping by the channel. I appreciate your support. I enjoy you stopping by and being a part of the channel. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.